Hello everyone and welcome to Boundless Dentistry. In this video we'll talk about how do we treat and manage deep bite. Firstly we'll talk briefly about what actually is deep bite then moving on towards this classification and different causes of deep bite and then finally moving on towards the prime objective of this video that is management of deep bite. So let's get started. Now, overbite is something that is normally present in your mouth that is the vertical overlap between the maxillary incisor and the mandibular incisor. This red shading you can see, this amount of covering that is being done by this maxillary incisor over this mandibular incisor, this is called as overbite and this is only called as overbite when the normal range is of 2 to 4 mm or you can also tell it in percentage way that is 30% so when this overlap is between 2 to 4 m or it's 30% then it is known as overbite and this is normal but in case when this overbite goes beyond 4 mm or more than 40% then it is known as deep bite and this deep bite is not normal you can see the excessive overlap between the maxillary and the mandibular incisors so this deep bite is not normal it is one of the most frequently encountered malocclusion in patients and it is often difficult to treat and it's easy to treat in growing patients but it's difficult to treat in adults to evaluate if the person has a deep bite or not we ask the patient normally to occlude in full centric occlusion way that is either in habitual way or occluding fully and when we do so then we clinically see if the overbite is present or deep bite is present now deep bite are of two types either it's com incomplete or it's complete now what do we mean by incomplete deep bite incomplete deep bite simply means that the maxillary incisor isn't fully covering the mandibular incisor or in other words you can say that this mandibular incisor it's not touching the palatal mucosa so in this case it will be incomplete deep bite on the other hand it's complete deep bite incomplete deep bite the mandibular central incisor is touching the palatal mucosa and it's fully covered by the maxillary central incisor or incisor so incomplete deep bite the mandibular incisor is not touching the palatal mucosa and incomplete deep bite the mandibular uh, incisor is touching the palatal mucosa two more further terms that are used in deep bite are cover bite and closed bite now in cover bite the mandibular incisors are completely covered by the maxillary incisors and mostly it's present in uh, class 2 div 2 malocclusion in which there is some reto inclination of the incisor so in this case the mandibular incisors are completely covered by your maxillary incisor so this is cover bite on the other hand is it's closed bite closed bite is also similar to cover bite but one difference is is that there is loss of posterior teeth when the posterior teeth are lost the mandibular incisor are covered by a maxillary incisor so this is known as closed bite and it is rare in children most commonly it is found in adults because as the person ages teeth are lost so closed bite is present mostly in adults now classifying deep bite deep bite mainly or you can say etiology of deep bite consists of two parts either there is some skeletal abnormality or there is some dental abnormality first we'll talk about skeletal abnormalities in this case by skeletal abnormality you pretty much know that either there is something wrong with the maxilla or there is something wrong with the mandible so firstly talking about mandibular abnormalities in this pic diagram you can see that when the mandible rotates upward and forward in this direction the overbite will tend to increase because it's moving in an upward direction or it is rotating in the upward direction similarly if on the other hand we talk about maxilla if the maxilla moves downward and forward in this way it rotates it will lead to increased overbite and there, thereby leading towards deep bite so these are the two skeletal abnormalities which tends to develop deep bite now what are the features which will be present in a skeletal deep bite problem firstly the patient will uh, know that there is some horizontal growth pattern secondly there will be decreased anterior facial height in this diagram you can see that the patient is exhibiting anterior facial height which is decreased so when the anterior facial height is decreased there will be chances of developing deep bite secondly there will be decreased interocclusal space which is known as 
freeway space that is the space between the premolar so when that will be decreased that means that there is something wrong with the posterior teeth mostly there is infra occlusion that is the posterior teeth are not at their normal occlusion level so that is going to lead towards deep bite and there is some cephalometric analysis which we can see which we'll talk about shortly that is frankfurt horizontal plane mandibular plane and sn planes they are almost parallel towards each other so these are the features which will be present in patients suffering from skeletal deep bite on the other hand we have dental deep bite in this case the maxilla and mandible are normal but there is something wrong with the teeth that are present which are predisposing a person towards developing deep bite mostly there are two uh, causes and these two causes are to be treated to treat the deep bite the first is over eruption of anteriors and second is infra occlusion of molars or the molars are not reaching their normal occlusion level so firstly talking about over eruption of anteriors mostly it's associated with malocclusion class 2 and when the anterior teeth have erupted more than they should they it tends to lead towards increased overjet because in sizes over erupt so overjet increases and then the curve of spree also increases so these all factors leads toward developing deep bite on the other hand if there is infra occlusion of molars the molar are not reaching the normal occlusion level their crown height is decreased when we see it clinically or there is premature loss of the posterior teeth and these these all factor leads towards molar being partially erupted so when they are partially erupted patient tends to lead toward developing deep bite now talking about diagnosis how do we diagnose deep bite there are basically two tools that we use the first is clinical examination clinically we see when the patient bites in a habitual or centric occlusion we see whether the overlap between the maxillary incisor and the mandibular incisor is normal or not so when we see a lateral cephalometric diagram we can analyze that these planes this blue red and red these lines you can see they are almost parallel towards each other so this gives us an idea that a person might have deep bite secondly we can also see that this mandible is rotated in an upward direction so this upward direction also predisposes a person to develop deep bite and the anterior cranial base angle is also acute so all these factors when we put together we can give a rough idea or a general idea that a patient might have deep bite so these two factors helps us in developing a diagnosis now before we start treating such patients with deep bite we have to consider some factors which will help in treating the patients in an optimal way so the first factor is to be determined whether intrusion or extrusion each which one of the uh, factor is to be considered and done and secondly lip relation is also be to be seen if a person has gummy smile an excessive maxillary anterior exposure in that case we will do anterior intrusion because excess maxillary anteriors are erupted so in that case and there is also gummy smile so anterior intrusion will be a better option for the patient to correct deep bite on the other hand if a person has normal upper lip and the normal amount of maxillary incisor is been exposed so we can have a rough idea that there is no over eruption of incisors there must be something wrong with the molar so in that case molar extrusion will be performed thirdly correcting deep bite is a better option in growing patients because in that case we reach a optimal treatment plan for the patient and there are less chances of relapse and fourthly because we are doing extrusion of molars when the molars are being extruded out anterior facial height also tends to be better and the fifth is if the interocclusal space is greater molar extrusion is a better option because there is some infra occlusion of the molars but if the interocclusal space is less reduced so anterior intrusion will be a better option to correct the interocclusal space which is the freeway space between the premolars now moving on towards developing a treatment plan for the patients we have three options either we use a removable appliance we use a fixed appliance or myofascial appliance mostly removable and fixed appliances are used myofascial appliances are not that commonly used firstly we'll start with talking about removable appliance the removable appliance first that we'll discuss is the anterior bite plane which is modified holly's appliance 
In this diagram, you can see this is the Adams class, which is present on the first molar, and it's basically for retention. This is the labial bow, and the labial bow is present so that it can counteract forward forces, so that we do not accidentally procline these incisors. So the forward force is countered by this labial bow. And in this case, you can see this acrylic plate that is present. So when a person wearing this appliance bites, the mandibular incisor contact this acrylic base. And when this acrylic base has been contacted by the mandibular incisor, some space is being opened up over here in the posterior teeth, as you can see in this clinical picture. And normally, 1.5 to 2 mm of this posterior space has to be reached so that extrusion of these molars can be done, which is the prime objective of using modified Hawley's appliance, that is, molar extrusion has to be performed and for that posteriorly 1.52 mm of space is to be provided so that optimal results can be achieved with this anterior bite plane. Second type of appliance we have is myofascial appliance. Myofascial appliance basically has only one function that is extrusion of molars and that can be achieved by either using activator which you can see in this diagram over here. Activator has many functions. Treating patients with deep bite is one of them. And we can also use Bionator. Bionator also has many functions. Treating deep bite is one of their functions. So in, the, in both the cases, extrusion of teeth is done so that deep bite can be reduced or eliminated. Now moving on towards fixed appliance that is used to treat deep bite. Firstly, we have anchorage bands. Now in this diagram, you can see this is your orthodontic appliance that is present. We have a molar tube and anterior to the molar tube, mesially there is a bend. You can see this bend and this bend is done and this moves in a gingival direction anteriorly you can see in this picture and when this arch wire which is in the orthodontic appliance is moved, moved occlusally some anterior force gingivally is applied and when this anterior force gingivally is applied as you can see in this arrow intrusive force is applied on these incisor teeth and there will be some intrusion of the incisor. So the basic purpose of anchorage bands which you can see in this diagram is to do incisor intrusion. You can see in this diagram how this intrusive force is applied. When this arch wire is moved occlusally, this force is applied gingivally. So intrusion of incisor will be done in anchorage bands. The second fixed appliance is arch wire with reverse curve of speed. Normally we know how a curve of speed is. When we reverse it with an arch wire, we can treat patients with deep bite. Now in this diagram, you can see how this curve of speed is reversed. And when this curve of speed is reversed, some force is applied gingivally in the anterior teeth. You can see in this diagram how much the uh, incisors are extruded out. And when this curve of P is used in a reverse direction with an arch wire, some gingival force is applied anteriorly. And as the appliance is worn for a patient for a long time, you can see how the incisors are now intruded in this picture. You can compare it with this picture and this picture. And final results are achieved over here. So in the arch wire with the reverse curve of P, anteriorly some gingival force is applied so that there can be intrusion of the incisors. So that is the purpose of arch wire with reverse curve of speed. The third appliance is intrusion arches. In intrusion arches, we have two segments. In this picture, you can see one buccal segment and one anterior segment. It's, it's somewhat a spring system that is used and in molar tube, this appliance is inserted in the auxiliary tube. This appliance goes anteriorly. It bypasses the premolars and canines. Then it makes a turn in the anterior direction in this you can see here and when it does so some intrusion force is applied so that intrusion of incisors can be done so here also intrusion of incisors is performed because we know that the molars have erupted in their normal position and they are present at the normal height but the incisors have over erupted so when the incisors have over erupted we apply intrusive force in the gingival direction so that intrusion of incisors can be done which is intrusion arches now the fourth fixed appliance is utility arches. In this case, it's also similar to intrusion arches, but one difference between them is that in case of utility arches, the anterior segment is engaged into the slots of bracket, while in case of intrusion arch, the anterior segment is tied to the segmental arch of the anteriors. You can see it's directly into the bracket and in the intrusion arches, it's sort of tied to the 
arch wire so that is the main difference between intrusion arches and utility arches it's also it also achieves the similar function that is intrusion of incisors and it's activated by this v bend buckley now the final fixed appliance we have is the fixed anterior bite plane the fixed anterior bite plane is similar to removable anterior bite plane but as the name suggests it is fixed and the main purpose that is being achieved by fixed anterior bite plane is extrusion of the posterior teeth now there are two types of fixed anterior bite planes one is in this case you can see in this diagram the anterior bite plane is fixed via this band that is being applied to the molars and secondly we can also use this bite plane which are made of either composite or gic more specifically bonded on the lingual surfaces of the maxillary incisors and they achieve the purpose of extrusion of posterior teeth so this was all about how do we treat deep bite firstly we started off by some brief and introductory although important points to tell us what actually is deep bite we talked about how do we classify deep bites what are the different types of deep bites which factors are to be considered before we start treating patients with deep bite and then we finally talked about how do we actually treat deep bite so i hope this video was useful for you and if you like this video please like share subscribe and press the bell icon thank you for watching this video see you next time